All right, hola mi gente, I am back. Clearly it's night and I'm just starting the vlog, but um, yesterday, yesterday, yesterday. Well first, hello to everybody, how are you guys doing? I hope you're hold, holding up pretty well. Behind me is my new um, blackout curtain. It works very well, but I mismeasured it and I don't know why I didn't think to remeasure it when I was measuring it so late at gosh darn night. So, um, yesterday I had a talk with my girl, of course, and um, I had a talk with a couple of other people who shall remain nameless. But this all started in the morning. In the morning, I was watching Good Girls. There was a part where Ruby is attempting to steal nail polish for her money making business and she has her daughter aid in helping her with this. So her daughter proceeds after they've accomplished whatever they needed to accomplish, got the nail polish from the nail salon, and she proceeds to ask her what she's doing. The mother gets very defensive and was like, I'm your mother, basically don't ask me what I'm doing, when she clearly had her daughter um, assisting her in something that was very much illegal. At this point, she had no moral high ground, like seriously. I feel like at that point, a different conversation could have been had, you know, like, we already know you're doing things wrong. The daughter is now aware that you're doing things wrong. So the different conversation could have been had in that moment. But this goes to show you like in a lot of homes that parents have the old adage, do as I say and not as I do, when quite the opposite tends to end up happening in the future. Um, we look at our parents as role models, things are, you know, um, in our minds like we see it every day so you're ingesting this constantly day in and day out and even though they might tell you one thing um, you're seeing a whole another thing so it might not correlate that don't do this because you're seeing this person repeatedly do these things um, I've always told my kids like I'm, I'm not perfect I'm not a perfect person. I have flaws, there's things wrong with me, and if you feel like I've wronged you in some area, like, please speak up, you know? Like, let me know, because you can't expect your children to just not notice your flaws. And then there'll be times where parents will ask for your opinion and then they won't value it. Like, you're young, girl, you don't know what you're talking about, and you very well could. So, you know, just looking at that situation, I was like, oh, wow, you know, oh, wow. That was super toxic, first of all, to have her daughter in that situation and then to just shut her down when she already knew what was going on. And literally, it just happens every day in homes. Like, your kids know, they're not stupid. You might try to have them turn a blind eye to things, but they literally know what's happening. So no matter what you think you're hiding, a lot of times you're not. And so it's just a good time to open up a conversation, open up the floor, create a dialogue between yourself and your child and just be honest. You know, honesty is the best policy. You're gonna have tons of people lying to them throughout their lives. So let you not be that person that they can't trust. You know what I mean? Like. If you can't trust your parents, who can you trust? And I just thought that was interesting. A lot of people won't agree with me because they were um, raised in the era that I was, where they're supposed to be seen and not heard. But as I've mentioned in several videos, that's toxic. How is the child supposed to learn to speak up for themselves later if they're shut down in their own homes? So, like, that's a very toxic behavior. So my daughter and I had to talk about that scene and you know, we just talked it out. A lot of times I deal with people that allow passes for toxic, very, very toxic behavior and it's not healthy. You know, instead of a person saying, you know what, you're better than this, you deserve more, you shouldn't allow this to happen, the person will be like, you know, it's fine, it just happened once, oh, it just happened twice, oh, it was just a thing, and no, um, it wasn't just a thing, it's something that needs to be dealt with, like, I like to know why these things happen, I want to make a choice about these things, and yeah, I 
I work differently now. When I was 20, that's when I got married at 20, um, I did things very differently. I swept things under the rug, that's what I was taught. So um, I watched my parents sweep many a things under the rug constantly and I knew I was rock walking into these things as they were in the room because you can feel tension. It's You don't even have to be a, an occupant of the home to feel the tension, you know what I mean? Like you just know it's there. And so I knew it was there but everyone else acted like it wasn't there. And that was a trait, a very bad trait that was taught to me that I carried with me for Sorry, my dog. Um, for a few years into my marriage, and I was like, no, I need to like, whenever things happen, I need to discuss them. We need to talk through them. Um, my husband's upbringing was pretty much, when it, with regard to that stuff, it was like mine, swept under the rug, and he kind of kept to sweeping things under the rug rather than confronting them. So it made it difficult for me to be able to move past things that happen in our relationship because they were never fully confronted so there'll be things even now that hurt me that have never really ever been fully addressed and now entering my 40th year of life there's just some things that I'm like, I need to really work on this. Like, I really want to become a better person. Um, I have behaviors that are toxic to myself and I'm showing them to my children. And I sit there and work things out with me and my children. We talk about these things and I tell them like, yo, what I did wasn't right. This part was wrong. Like, let them know that I'm not always right. It's crazy when you look back on life and you see like, as far as your life goes, like where you consider to be the beginning of this toxic behavior. So one of the ones that I hate is when your thoughts don't align with theirs and they consider you wrong. And instead of being open-minded or at least open-minded enough to say, I'll agree to disagree, it either you have to align with somebody or wrong. So that's kind of like how things go in my world when I was younger it was you know if you didn't believe what they believed it was kind of wrong and I saw it play out in different ways I had to be aware of I had to know what my triggers were like I had to know a lot of things about myself in order to not project those things on my children so I found something and I told Kevin and I said you know Things that were familiar to me in my childhood had played out in my marriage and it was something that I realized it a long time ago but never addressed it. Like this is why, possibly why, I chose the way I did, you know, because it was a familiar feeling to me, you know, and that familiar feeling to me was walking on landmines. Growing up, that was something that I was super familiar with. It was something that was crazy because if you went to the left, there was a landmine, but if you went to the right, there was an eggshell. So no matter what you did, you couldn't step in the right place. And then that one or two times that you found that place that wasn't right, shortly thereafter was a landmine or an eggshell. So I was used to tippy toeing around. And in the beginning of our relationship, Kevin had a temper. He was an angry person. There was residual things left over from his traumas. And so it was familiar to me. Like, I, I'm like, this territory is like home. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Isn't that not weird? It, it was home. Hold on a second, guys. Click. So it was home to me, and I felt familiar with it. I felt okay with it. I felt, you know, like, this is how I grew up this is my life and this is I know how to work with this so it was it was a sad reality but it was my reality you get what I'm saying I worked on those things my blood pressure really fast and because I haven't done it in a while here's my machine this is the brand it was list can y'all see it I guess it's Lazl Lazly I don't know um, it was listed at $89.99 and I got it for like 30 something on Amazon. I love the machine. It takes batteries though. That's like the only downside to it. Um, yeah. So let me take my blood pressure and I'll get right back to you guys. Diastolic pressure. 79. 
millimeter of mercury pillar. Your pulse is 77 beats per minute. Measuring result is normal. Thank you. Wish you a good health. All right, so my blood pressure is normal according to this. Um, I haven't been taking it lately and I need to make sure I wasn't like missing on my medication. I tend to treat it naturally with magnesium, but sometimes when I'm under a lot of stress, the magnesium doesn't work quite as well. So, um, yeah. This is the end of my rant. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. And I hope you have a wonderful, 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 wonderful Tuesday. I had to go finish working right now. Um, I didn't plan to be out this long. But I had so many things going through my mind, like the good girls thing and all these conversations. Like, it was just so much. Like, so much. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to talk about it. Because that good girls thing, I was just like, oh my gosh. Did she really just be like, don't talk to me like that? I am your mother after she just stole a shitload of nail polish? Come on, sis. But anyways, love you guys. Bye.